Welcome, family. I'm Elisa Teague. I am sitting here with Justin Achille. Hi, Justin. Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm holding it together as best I can. <laughs> well, we're here for Renegade Con, and we are doing the World of Darkness Reveals panel, which I think is the most fun panel because we get to spill all of the secrets. But first, before we start, I wanted you to really introduce yourself for any new players that don't know who you are. Uh, what do you do over at Paradox? Sure, that's great. Uh, I'm Justin Achille. I'm the brand creative lead for World of Darkness at Paradox Interactive. Um, that's kind of like a creative director, except it's across the brand. So um, it's not tied to a specific uh, product or project. Um, so I get to uh, get my hands dirty with uh, you know all the stuff we're discussing today, the uh, RPG stuff. Uh, I get to work on comic books. I get to work on uh, you know a, a wide variety of, of transmedia that all helps make up the World of Darkness. So the best job. <laughs> it's It's pretty good, I have to say. <laughs> uh, well, today we're going to be talking about everything that has to do with the RPG releases that are coming in 2022 for World of Darkness. And you'll notice everybody, I'm saying World of Darkness and not just Vampire the Masquerade because we have a lot to show you today. And we have uh, a lot of new books that are coming out. And I just want to say that right now we already have all of the core rule books, Camarilla, and uh, we have the Anarch book and Sabat all over at Roll20. They are actually doing a feature for Renegade Game Studios this month and all month long. And so check it out because it really is a valuable tool to add to your tabletop experience. You can play virtually. They have an amazing new dice roller for Vampire that lets you see your successes and your failures right away. And it also is a really great tool for whether you're sitting around the table together even or playing from far away um, to be able to pass secret notes and show off as a storyteller, show off information virtually. And it's really great. So go and check that out at Roll20. Um, so now that I talked about Roll20 a little bit, I want to talk about all of the new updates we have for physical products. And the first one is going to be, I have a Second Inquisition update for everybody. I know that we announced Second Inquisition la last year, late last year. And now I can officially say that the Second Inquisition source book is en route to our warehouse. And it is going to be in stores very, very soon. And how do I know that? I have a production copy to show off. So look, it is real and amazing. And let's see if I can do what I did when I practiced was open it up to like a perfect page. Let's see. Oh, it's a pretty good, good one. Oh yeah. I love the artwork in this book. I can't show it all off, but lots of little teaser pictures. I know all of you out there who do all your screen caps, I'll try and screen cap, leave it up there for enough for a little screen cap for you to show off um, on all of your friends. Let's see, let's get one more. And then, ooh. but yeah, very cool stuff. This is on its way. If you um, haven't heard all about this book, uh, we actually have a cool uh, storytelling panel with Trivia Fox and De Deanna D'Amico, and that is happening tomorrow. And make sure to check that out. Check out the Renegade Con calendar for exact times in your time zone so that you can sit in and listen to how you can use the Second Inquisition book and Sabat uh, to incorporate into your chronicles. So that's our update for Second Inquisition. And then we will move on to another really cool announcement. Justin, we are ready to announce the Vampire the Masquerade Player's Guide. What are your thoughts on the Player's Guide? Yeah, this is great. Uh, we've got a uh, copy of it, well, your text copy of it right now that we're reviewing um, on the uh, Paradox end. Uh, and so this one, um, I don't want to steal your thunder here, but I'm going to kind of pick a few couple of things key topics here to talk about. Um, we've yeah. had uh, players uh, mention that um, several of the clans for Vampire are spread out among a variety of source books. And so, you know, they have to kind of grab this book for this clan, grab this book for this clan. 
course, this is our opportunity to collect all of those clans and bring them into one source so that it's convenient uh, for everyone there. Um, this also includes the clans that were in the uh, free um, Vampire the Masquerade Companion, that uh, paradox that we gave away at the end of 2020. Oh my gosh, when, when was this? 2021? <laughs> December of 2020. <laughs> I can't even remember anymore. What is time anyway? <laughs> Um, but, uh, and so this is also uh, because the, the, the Vampire the Masquerade Companion wasn't ever put into physical print, um, the clans uh, from that uh, supplement are collected in here along with the uh, La Sombra, along with the uh, Ministry, along with the Banu Hakim, um, so they're all in one place, um, and one of the things that uh, our community has asked for as well is um, some amount of, of errata on the stuff that was originally placed in the Companion, so that's collected in here as well. Um, also, one of the things that I think is really cool in here, there's a, there's a huge variety of um, literally player resources. So things like, you know, you mentioned Roll20 a little while ago. There's stuff in here for how to tell a really strong game and how to play a really strong game uh, in virtual environments. You know, if you're at a virtual tabletop instead of around a traditional tabletop. Um, there's also something really cool that uh, I'm looking forward to in here that is the um, alternate banes for the clans. Um, so this is kind of a new way to play a fresh take on the clans. Um, every clan has a, kind of a bane, a weakness um, that represents it thematically. Um, and this is a chance to, while still remaining true to the ideas that make that clan unique, uh, just kind of vary the weakness of the clan. So you can kind of play with, I guess, different consequences is how it comes out. Yeah, absolutely. And I also love the fact that uh, this player's guide also like walks you through character creation in sort of a different way. Um, and it really allows you to create your character in a guided fashion that I think is really important, especially for new players. And um, I also love the fact that we are getting to print all of the beautiful art that was in Companion um, so that people can have that art in a hardcover book on their shelf. We're obviously adding in a lot more too. Um, and so I think it's going to be a really useful uh, addition to the core rule book for players to use in their stories. Um, and so this is planned for a summer release, summer 2022. So that one's coming really soon. As you hinted at, uh, this is right now in review at Paradox. And then we are going to get that all laid out and into print for all of you folks at home. Um, so yeah, and it's also it, it takes into account uh, again. I was mentioning uh, listening to the, the community feedback here. One of the, the things that we heard from the from players was that, for example, when we did the salubri in the companion, um, the salubri didn't have archetypes. You know, there are so few salubri that you know if we do it archetypes. That's most of the salubri right there, right? Uh, but the players said they wanted, you know, they wanted some suggestions on well, what would be a good idea, a good concept for a salubri. So this book, for example, takes that and runs with it. You know, listen to people. Hey, here's more of what we want. And we put that in there. Yeah, there's a lot more to explore here, which is really, really great. Um, <clears throat> and again, different ways to create different types of characters within these clans. And having it as like a one-stop shop for all of the clans all in one place is just so handy. So that is really cool. Um, all right. I know that most people at home would be watching saying, okay, panel over. What more can we ask for? We, we're finally getting our player's guide. But no, there is so much more because we are also adding another player tool accessory for all of you at home, which is our beautiful vampire character journal. Uh, and there it is. Ooh, it is so cool, it's gonna have a linen finish and the, the red foil onk on the cover. It is so in theme and great to carry around at your table. It's a beautiful book that you will be able to write all of not only your character sheet information in, there are prompts for character background histories, what you did in your life before becoming embraced, uh, how you were embraced, uh, different parts of your community, your coterie, your, your haven, descriptions of what your disciplines do for you personally, um, not just like the, the blanket book description, like how do you use it in play, um, and all of the space for session notes, uh, relationship maps. There are prompts for everything that will really help get the juices going and how you can set up goals for your characters um, and so that you have, you're basically chronicling your story right there in this gorgeous journal. 
Um, and I know that for me, I play a ton of different role-playing games. Uh, I keep separate journals for every single character in every single chronicle or campaign that I'm playing in. And I have stacks and stacks of notebooks that are just like blank line. I have them all over the place in here uh, that are just blank lined notebooks where I just scribble down session notes and, and I'll say, oh, well, we met this person and I'll give a quick description. And then it's weeks later, sessions later, and I need to really quickly look up that person, that ally that I made or, or that enemy that I made, and I can't find the information. The cool thing about this is that it's all laid out for you. You'll be able to turn directly to the pages that's, that has your relationship maps, directly to the page that lists all of your touchstones, your allies, and it's all right there for you, easy to find, and keeps your, your notes straight and easy, uh, which I really love. And I don't know. I know you haven't had your hands on it yet, Justin, but how do you think that this type of tool is going to change gameplay for, for players? Yeah, I think this is this is a really great resource for players. Um, as you mentioned, you know, being able to uh, annotate your your goals, you know, the things that you're trying to achieve. I mean, ultimately, games are about choice. You know, when you when you play, you make choices and the choices that you're going to make are going to affect, you know, not only yourself, but, you know, people in your coterie, you know, you mentioned your touchstones as well. Um, so, you know, there's kind of, if you'll permit me the language here, kind of shit rolls downhill, right? And so when you get, <laughs> when, when something goes awry in Vampire, that's really where the game, you know, starts to, to, to really take on, you get to see your, the, the consequences of your actions. Um, and so this helps you, you know, not only plot, oh, my character really wants to achieve this, but also how it affects other people, how it affects, you know, the events of the Chronicle. And uh, really, as you say, you know, it's, it's a way to, to keep track of your story. You know, since this is the storyteller system, since, you know, the World of Darkness games are about, you know, reinvigorating the tradition of, reinvigorating the tradition of storytelling, this is a place to keep track of all that. Um, and, you know, it's even get, keeping track of things like, you know, your, your, predator type, you know, how do you hunt, even if this is something that, you know, doesn't overtly come up during the course of the game, or every situation that happens in the game is in contrast to how you choose, you know, that's going to create, you know, trouble, that's going to create outcomes, oh, I'm used to, you know, kind of sneaking in and taking from people, you know, while they're, I, I, while they're asleep, oh, but this time it's been, you know, Chronicle's been so high action, I'm not used to it, and so all my feedings fail, you know, all that stuff makes for great fodder, you know, makes for uh, successes and failures that then create other, you know, storytelling opportunities there, so keeping track of it all in one place is, is really a boon to the player. Yeah, and I know for me, um, I, again, I play in a lot of different games, and it's not that I don't love each and every one of my characters, but keeping track just of what each character specifically does and how everything specifically affects that particular character is really important to me to have a really enriched role-playing session. I, I don't want to just be sitting there and rolling dice when I'm told to and not really engaging with the story that's been going on. And, not everybody has the opportunity, you know, we talk about this a little bit in, in the player's guide, not everybody has the opportunity to play in regular games every week um, and, and keep that story fresh in their mind or keep their characters even fresh in their mind. And there are a lot of rules to remember. There are a lot of, especially for new players, a lot of disciplines and, and what they do to remember and having that written down in an easy to find format where you don't have to go running to the book every single time, the, you know, the core rule book, looking it up, but not only just writing down, you know, the exact description of what it does, but how it personally affects you, how your character actually reacts to certain situations, I think is really, really important for engaging role play. Um, and it helps you learn a lot about your fellow players as well, um, because everybody really stays in character that way. And it's almost like, um, an artifact of your own, you know, I mean, like any journal would be for, for, you know, uh, yourself in the re in the real world. Um, that's this a, is that's a great word choice there. I was, I was going to say artifact as well. Like even when the Chronicle concludes, you now have this record of it that you can go back and say, oh, I remember when we did this or even trade them with the other players. Like, what were you up to here? <laughs> you know, <I> never saw, <laughs> right? oh, that All the secrets are revealed. <laughs> um, I mean, no, and that's a really, really cool point is looking back. I mean, again, I have a bunch of, you know, there, I use, you know, composition notebooks and stuff like that. And I have them all, I have them all back decades and decades of playing. And I, it's so much fun to go back and look. But this is almost like what those, you know, 
all about me books, you know, that, that you fill out when you're a kid and then you're, you grow up and you look back on them and like, oh, wow, my, you know, when I was five, my favorite vegetable was broccoli or whatever. It's like, oh, this is a lot more interesting than that. But um, it's, it's really going to be a cool thing to look back on and a useful tool in game. So I'm really excited about this one. Uh, we will be doing these for more brands and um, it, they're looking really, really cool. So, and I just think it looks gorgeous at the table as well. Um, carry around with you and show that you are uh, a true fan. Um, okay, so moving on to other new player tools. This is a product that I am so personally excited about. I have so many friends who have not only like never played any role playing game before, um, but a lot of them have not surprisingly, knowing me, it's a very big surprise, they've not played Vampire the Masquerade. And I've been trying to get them on board or try to get them to play with me and they're you know maybe a little apprehensive, a little scared, it's a big rule book. Um, and, and some of them actually have played but haven't played in a really long time because we played back in the 90s and they don't know, you know what's changed. So we are going to be putting out the Vampire the Masquerade starter set. And this is something that has actually been in the works for a long time. There's a sneak preview at the cover. Very cool. Um, and what the starter set is, is it's a boxed set that is going to have all of the tools you need to learn how to play or to teach people how to play Vampire the Masquerade. And it is going to come with six pre-generated characters so that you can jump right into play uh, with quick start rules. Uh, the characters actually coming out, like we have beautiful character art that walks you through um, how the character is basically built and then also starts off with a story that begins on the first night of your embrace. You wake up and what do you do? And this actually takes you through all of the steps of what it is like to now be this totally different being. And how do you role play that? How do you role playing in vampire is so different than role playing in any other game. And, and even if you have played role playing games before and haven't played this one, it is really a different, not only are the mechanics, you know, unique, of course, storyteller system is very unique, but um, living within, the, or unliving within this world um, is really different. And this takes you through all of the steps of what your feelings are as this happens to you. Uh, what is what is hunger? I mean, it. what happens to your body? What happens to your mind? Um, what, what are the differences between the clans? Um, and what happens when you wake up and you, you need to now manage a brand new world of darkness. Um, and so I, I'm really excited about this one. Um, and I think that it's gonna be a really great step forward for new players. And you know, I wanted to talk to you, Justin, about like what you think the biggest barrier has been for new players and you know, what other steps beyond you know using the product like this like people can do when they want to get in we're, we're offering all of these new things the the player's guide the journal the starter set but how do people who are you know are watching right now and they're saying oh i really want to know all about vampire the masquerade how do i break in how do i start yeah, this is, I, I agree. I, I love your enthusiasm for this. And this is something that yeah. we were really excited about it when we first started talking about, about working together. Um, and what this uh, starter set does for me is it starts to address the question of coming into RPGs is no longer a kind of one size fits all solution, right? Like in the past, you know, when I was younger and first started playing, I played in my cousin's basement and kind of everybody came to it that way. But we now see that there are many, many people who are coming to the world of darkness who aren't coming to it from, you know, their cousin's table in the, in the basement, right? They're coming to it from, you know, maybe they've seen LA by night online, or they may have seen one of the uh, TikTok groups who's kind of playing their improvised LARP on TikTok, whatever, you know, people are discovering the world of darkness, not necessarily 
way through the tabletop RPG first. So this is a great way for them to get into it. Um, you know, it, the, the Vampire of the Masquerade 5th edition core book is, is a beautiful book, but it's like you say, it's a big book, right? And so, you know, hey, I'm interested in doing this. Well, here, read these 500 pages. Nah, that's not going to happen necessarily, right? For people who want to get into it, you know, more quickly, a, a box set, a starter set like this can really help you. Like, here's the most important things to know. Get up and go. Start telling your vampire story. Um, I also think that this is going to be really, really valuable for players who are existing players who want to introduce the game to other friends, right? So it's no longer That's why here I'm to borrow my copy of this, right? It's, oh, you want to play this? You, you saw the show on the, you know, you saw uh, uh, one of the, uh, the, the game streams. Right, you know, we can get this going right away. So this is an awesome kind of thing to just have in your trunk or in your, you know, your back pocket, as it were. And you know, when someone expresses interest, you know, boom, you can get going. It's it's kind of like a quick start. It's got everything you need to know. It introduces all the concepts right away without having to go through, you know, and read. And you know, you get to experience them first. You know, reading the book and learning about it is an awesome way to get into RPGs. You know, it's it's my course having having you know played and got into it that way. But you know, if you want to just get in there and get your hands dirty right away, whether as a new player or as a an experienced player who's bringing new people into it this this is the way to go this is the way to go definitely and as you said that my goal is to use this to to bring my friends in a lot of my friends have you know caught the streams for sure um or they've played other role-playing games or they just really want to start with something and they really like the the vampire aesthetic and they or they've played the video games and they want a way to translate that onto the table and play something that is more face-to-face -face and analog with people. Um, but looking at the book, like you said, it's it's a little daunting, you know, um, to, to start off by yourself. This starter set is going to have stories that are broken up into parts so that you can play it almost like a board game. Um, it's not a board game, it's definitely the role-playing game, but um, you have it in pieces so that you can learn it step-by-step. Step. And as you play on and on, you're learning new mechanics of the storyteller system. You're learning how to roll and resolve dice rolls. You know, you're you're learning how to do all of those things. And I think that it's going to be a really great tool for, for people who want to jump in. Um, well, and, and it's in those, those kind of <laughs> controlled session sizes too, right? Like, hey, I want to learn to play vampire. Awesome. Set aside four hours and we'll get going. Like, oh, not going to do that, right? But if we can mm -hmm. tell an hour's worth of interesting and intense story and, you know, kind of get the it almost becomes like a greatest hits, you know, you don't have to, to, to string it out over four hours. You can kind of, tonight we're working on this and, you know, for people who don't have four hours every week to do, well, you know, maybe we can do this over lunch or, you know, we can do it before you guys go to the hockey game on Saturday or whatever there, right? So it's, it's just such a great portable, convenient way to get into the hobby uh, or to kind of, you know, change your, your habits for the hobby. Uh, it's, it's a win-win across the board. Yeah, I'm very excited about that one. If you couldn't tell everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on, because I could sit and talk about the starter set all day long, but we don't have that kind of time. We are on a schedule. So uh, we have another really cool book. It is in the works right now. I don't even know if I should really be talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, um, because I'm very <laughs> excited about it. We have amazing writers on this one, and this is a brand new source book for Vampire the Masquerade. It is our Blood Sigils book, and this is going to be the Blood Sorcery and Thin Blood Alchemy source book. And I know that that is going to, you know, blow a lot of people's minds. People have been waiting for this. Um, I've been reading what they, the writers have been putting down so far, and it is so good. Um, but I, again, I know a lot of new players are are watching this right now, and they're thinking, wait, Blood, blood Sorcery? That sounds like magic. What 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 is that? Uh, so, Justin, can you give a rundown of what blood sorcery is in the world of darkness, and you know how it's used in game? How are people going to use this book? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, blood sorcery is a discipline, and of course, disciplines are these vampiric powers. And in many cases, disciplines are um, very narrow expressions of the blood. Things like you know tremendous speed uh, or unholy strength or the ability to turn into you know, a bat or a wolf, you know, things like that. Um, but blood sorcery is kind of a strange discipline in that it's much more flexible um, than other disciplines. Uh, it kind of lets you 
almost improvise the powers of the blood or refine the powers of the blood into kind of unique expressions of it. Um, and along those lines, uh, thin blood alchemy is something that uh, these, these young vampires of very thin or weak blood, very new um, arrivals to the world of darkness can kind of tweak their blood to behave certain ways that older vampires or more potent blooded vampires can't. Um, so what's really cool about this book is it not only gives you ways to tweak your blood uh, once you are an established vampire, but if you're one of these almost, you know, accursed or duskborn, you know, thin blooded vampires, here's ways that you can kind of bend your blood and, you know, create these wondrous effects and, well, to be honest, pretty spooky effects. Um, and one of the things that I really appreciated about the uh, outline that y'all had put together when we first started talking about doing this is it's not just a book of powers, right? It's a book about, you know, you have this discipline. How do you get the ingredients necessary to fuel, you know, these weird witchy blood powers? Or, you know, how do you, uh, if you, you meet someone else who's a practitioner of this, how do you relate to them? What are they doing? How can this affect your chronicle? You know, even if you aren't the person using blood sorcery, uh, if you encounter it in kindred society, Society at large, what does that mean? And so it's kind of a bigger holistic look at blood sorcery. Oh, and here's a bunch of cool stuff you can do as well. Here's a bunch of neat verbs you can exercise at the table. You know, again, games is about making choices, you know, so here's some, some interesting new choices to make as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my favorite part about this book is that it's not only a resource for players that would be using it, but it's also a resource for storytellers, um, for, for story hooks. When I was talking to, you know, Ken Height, who is one of the writers and the lead dev of this book, and I don't want to give too much away, I'm not going to spoil too much, but, you know, we were talking about uh, plans for it, and, you know, he was talking about, well, what do you do in game, like, when you need to go and find this stuff, you need to find the recipes for these, you need to find the ingredients, where would you go, you know, and we were brainstorming about the different, you know, back alley places you would go, would you go to a, a bookstore and they have a secret back room in the in the back? Would you go to like a, a strange, you know, uh, grocery like market, like a kosher butcher to get like certain types of ingredients? Like where where are the different like places that you would go that you wouldn't expect? Because all of the all of vampire and you know all everything in World of Darkness takes place in the real world. You are a vampire, you know, walking around and. You need to acquire these things. It's not just like, oh, you instantly have it. And then there are all these other layers on top of it that I think for a storyteller, you know, when I'm thinking about the types of stories that I want to write for this um, and put my players through, it's like, well, you need to acquire these things and the stores only open during, you know, daylight hours. How do you go about this? It actually builds itself. You know, it builds all of the, you know, different obstacles that you have to go through that isn't just, oh, I'm going to sink my fangs into this thing uh, right now. And I think that it, it makes such a more complete world. I don't know. I'm really all about this one. <laughs> um, and, and it helps and push then, boundaries as well, right? Like, you know, traditionally, the practitioners of blood sorcery are the Banu Hakim um, and uh, the Tremere. What does it mean when you are a gangrel who has, you know, learned some kind of blood sorcery? Where did you pick it up? How do you, you know, get your uh, components for it, et cetera? Um, one of the things that I think is, is really fascinating about the Anarchs in the fifth edition is, you know, blood sorcery is kind of, it's almost this trade element among these various Anarch packs where, oh, I learned this blood sorcery from this Tremere who was fleeing the pyramid, um, you know, this, this, this oppressive Tremere structure, and I learned it, and now I want to teach it to you. How do I teach it to you? You know, here I am, the gangrel who learned it, teaching it to a Toreador who, you know, now, and so how does this affect vampire culture? You know, there's, there's all these great it's not just a discipline, right? It's it's a set of outcomes. It's a set of storytelling components. It's, you know, how does this affect our story? Right. And taking place in modern nights, it's not through traditional means either. It's not just, oh, you find a dusty tome and here's this, you know, uh, you know, ancient secret of how to do this. It's now digital. You find it on a secret website. You, you know, you scan a QR code, you do this, you do that. And it's like, it, it's really mixing the two into a blend of all these different types of ways to perform these you know rituals which is, i don't know i'm i'm really excited and the other thing and you mentioned the thin bloods uh the thin blood alchemy uh, is that i think that 
I mean, maybe this is just in my circles. Thin bloods um, among the elder vampires are looked down upon, at least in my, in my games, a lot oftentimes. And I think that them having these extra special, like really cool, wicked things that they can do, um, really not only just balances it game wise, but also story wise, it's so cool. Um, it really makes me want to um, explore different types of characters that I can play. Um, especially now reading this new material that's coming, I'm like, oh yes, I am doing this. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it's very much a tool to the world of darkness is about challenging the status quo, right? It's about, you know, here's this Camarilla Prince with all this power and, you know, really only serving themselves. Well, this is a way for you as a thin blood to kind of, you know, give them the middle finger or, you know, to kind of shake the, the pillars of that of, of the ivory tower there. And so, you know, these are ways for you know, again, it's not just a list of powers. It's it's a method by which you can challenge those unjust structures that exist, right? And, you know, again, now that you've got power, do you use it justly? Or, you know, are you just replacing, you know, is this just reg regime change? Are you using blood sorcery to replace this unjust prince and become a tyrant yourself? You know, it just provokes this, this endless string of questions and questions other stuff of stories. So, so I, I love books like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, I know I've said I'm excited about all of them because I really genuinely am. Um, but it, well, it don't is- Don't do books you don't care about, book. right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, new stuff is always so much fun. So, um, and as I say that, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about old stuff. Not really, it's not even that old. But uh, the next stuff that's coming out also this year, uh, we are doing uh, Renegade Game Studios reprints of Cults of the Blood Gods and Chicago by Night and more are coming too. Don't worry, all the rest of them are coming. Uh, but those are the first two that are coming out uh, as reprints. And uh, they're going to have little bits of fixes and some errata going on. Um, I don't, you know, want to dwell on too much of it, but I am really excited to have these back on the market. I know people have been looking for them um, and they are coming. Uh, oh, look, we're showing off the, the covers. Um, of them. And so if you have not had a chance to get your hands on Chicago by Night or Cults of the Blood Gods, um, those are coming very, very soon to a game store or internet site near you. Um, so yeah, anything to add on any of those? Justin. Uh, I just want to say that I'm super glad to see these coming back uh, into, into print. Um, these were done originally by our friends at, at uh, Onyx Path, and now uh, you guys at Renegade are doing the uh, printing and distribution of those uh, going forward. Um, Chicago by Night, in particular, is one of the classic, classic uh, vampire settings, and this, of course, updates it to 5th edition standards. Um, and uh, even if you don't want to tell a story in Chicago, Chicago by Night is this fantastic book that is basically a template for how you can set up a uh, very political horror focused uh, story for, you know, again, if, if you don't want to do Chicago, if you want to do your home city, or if you want to do something far distant that's always had an allure to you, um, there's that there. But, you know, you can kind of use Chicago as a model to to build it on. Um, I'm so yeah, glad this is, this is becoming available there. again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's so much to use there. Um, I always take bits and pieces from different material anyway, when I'm like, creating my own thing. And uh, again, there's there's so much to draw from in, the, in that book. Um, so I'm really excited. It's going to be back in print. Okay, moving along. Guess what? We're out of vampire stuff. But guess what? We're out of vampire stuff and we get to talk about the next thing. I know that we teased it um, a little bit ago, but let's talk about <clears throat> Hunter. Um, so Hunter is, uh, coming this summer, uh, it is at the printer and it is, um, awesome. We're, we're going to show you a, a quick peek at the cover, a, like a sneak peek at the cover of the book. And then we also, uh, along with the release, we are going to be having custom Hunter dice that are, uh, not just like the vampire dice, but uh, useful in game. Let's see if we can get a picture of those. Oh, ooh, ah. and not only do we have that beautiful mock up of the dice that are at the factory right now, um, but I also can show off factory samples of these dice. Let's see if I can get them in front of the camera. Okay. Ooh, they're a little blurry. Sorry, everybody, but they are awesome and real. They are in 
the classic hunter orange and black. Um, and these are, man, I really wish I could get the symbols to show up. Um, well, you're just going to have to wait. Um, but these are Please. great for, <laughs> I know, right? Um, when you are making your rolls, these are just like the, the vampire dice where it's really easy to uh, see what your successes, your failures are. Um, I know that, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but we could talk maybe a little bit about uh, the symbology or the roles if you want to um, on these um, and a little bit about Hunter in general. Um, I don't know where to begin. Let's, let's start with the fact that, so Hunter it was obviously, it was developed by Paradox, in-house at Paradox. We're going to be publishing it here at Renegade and we're developing already source books to follow it. Um, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, what, what is Hunter? <laughs> like what, what's the rundown of who hunters are in World of Darkness? I got way too excited about Hunter. So no, let's good. start that's, there. That's, that's, that's <laughs> where, my, that's where my, 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 my thoughts are right now too, um, is uh, Hunter is about the common people who discover vampires or you know, other monsters, you know, discover the supernatural exists and it ignites a drive in them. You know, it, it suddenly makes them need to do something about it. Um, and Hunter's interesting to me because it's not about, you know, we opened the, the discussion today talking about Second Inquisition. You know, and Second Inquisition is very much about organizations. You know, here's the, the, the uh, Special Affairs Division, or here is, uh, you know, the Society of St. Leopold um, and these big groups of hunters. But Hunter the Reckoning is about, you know, small groups of everyday people who discover the supernatural exists and have to do something about it. And so weirdly, as much as they're in conflict with the supernatural itself, you know, you've learned that this vampire exists, but also potentially as an antagonist is this big hunter, this, this larger org. So you may run afoul of the FBI while you're hunting vampires as well. Um, and the difference is as a hunter, a capital H hunter, you have drive. You have something that pushes you above and beyond. You have something that makes you go that much further. Um, and that's something that uh, the orgs themselves don't have. You know, the SAD doesn't have drive. The SAD largely takes orders. You know, again, we talked about uh, the world of darkness being opposition to the status quo. Um, and in many cases, these orgs are the status quo. You know, here's this massive government organization that exists to oppose vampires. It exists to impose its order, you know, as opposed to me, who's a plumber, who learned that my neighbor is a vampire, oh God, what am I going to do about this? And, you know, I come into contact with other people, other common, you know, individuals, um, everyday people who, you know, learn about this. And now we start to have to think creatively. You know, we're basically this kind of almost startup, uh, we call them cells of hunters, these, these band, these groups of hunters that band together. Um, and so, because we do have drive, that's kind of what you were alluding to there with the dice. You know, there are systems that allow you to press your luck as a hunter. You know, it allows you to go above and beyond, but you're risking something there. You know, you're, you can invoke your drive in certain situations, but it's not just free dice. You know, it comes at a cost, it comes as a risk. You saw a little exclamation point there on one of those, uh, on one of those dice. I'm not even gonna say what the dice are called yet, uh, but that exclamation point means something specific. Um, so, you know, all, all of this is, you know, again, about challenging the status quo. You know, these monsters exist. They're, they are exploiting society. These big orgs exist. They're imposing their will. And here's you caught in the midst of all of it. I always think kind of, you know, a conflict triangle is more interesting than just, you know, a, du a duality here. Um, and so Hunter is really really about uh, taking back the night, you know, fighting against the supernatural uh, monster predation, uh, but also about basically doing what's right. Yeah, I, I, I was actually planning to ask you, and you kind of went there already, so that's good, you know, what the difference is, you know, we talked about Second Inquisition coming out uh, very soon, and, you know, during this global event, you know, that is, you know, threatening vampires everywhere, you know, you have these, basically, they're hunters, you know, um, but what is the difference between the the evil threat of of these you know factions in the second during the second inquisition and these you know splinter cells or, or individual cells or individual hunters that you take on as a player character in hunter and i know for me uh, character wise you know what what my motivation is is very different my motivation as a storyteller playing you know uh the the storyteller characters that are are after you know the supernatural beings that you know 
um, that are part of this, you know, event of the second inquisition, it's, it's really like, I have to do this. I'm told to do this or society has made me do this. Well, it's Hunter for me is like, I have a personal connection for some reason was somebody I love killed. Was there a mysterious, you know, disappearance? Did I, wit like you said, you witness your neighbor. Um, but I'd love for you to explore a little bit more about the difference because we did make it, you know, really clear that um, for Second Inquisition, these are storyteller villains, right? Um, not to be not to be played at the table by characters. And now we have Hunter coming out. This is meant to be played by by players at the table. Can you? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't call them villains necessarily. I prefer to think of them as as antagonists. Um, and you know, there's a slight difference in in the meaning of the word there. And like antagonists, I can often understand the motivations of, right? Um, and so one of the things that I think is particularly valuable here is that, you know, again, in opposition to the status quo, the, the orgs take orders, you know, the orgs want something and opposing the supernatural, oh, just happens to be a means to that end. But for the individual hunters, you know, what ignites that drive is that very personal spark, you know, whether it is personal loss or, you know, maybe my father was a werewolf and, you know, what, what has that done to me? Um, and, and one of the things that I think is also really cool about this is that um, it lets us kind of recast those antagonists. So if I'm running a, a, a vampire chronicle and I've bought the second Inquisition book, well, I can also use the second Inquisition book as antagonist for my hunter game uh, because, you know, I am this individual hunter, you know, my troop is playing these individual hunters and we still have these orgs that we're in opposition to. Um, so, you know, there's this kind of greater sense that, you know, World of Darkness isn't just these silos of individual games. You know, it is a true World of Darkness. These pieces do interrelate. Um, but then, you know, again, to go back to your actual question, <laughs> drilling down into the individual hunter state, um, you know, here's here's hunters who are putting everything they have on the line, right? It's not like I just go to my job as a vampire hunter. You know, if I am a, you know, I'm the cable guy and I learn that monsters exist and, hey, I can't come into work today because I have to go fight werewolves. That's not going to fly, right? You know, so that's one of the first costs you start paying uh, as a hunter. You mentioned for the, the vampire starter set, you know, here's your first night as a vampire. Here, how does it change your perspective? Well, what does it mean to be a hunter? What does it mean that, you know, your wife now no longer understands, I, I have to go kill monsters at night, honey. I'll be, I'll be back later. What does that do to your relationship with her? Um, and, you know, that's obviously going to cause some stress there. You know, here's again these these very personal stakes, but you're not going it alone. You're finding these other hunters who are in the cell with you, um, and they have this common awful knowledge that at least binds you. Um, and one of the things also that kind of is implicit in this is when you're a vampire, you've got forever to kind of go on. Uh, but hunter pretty much assumes this isn't going to last forever. You're only going to be able to do this so long. Um, and so, you know, how meaningful can you make your actions until ultimately the cost is too high, whether it is your own death, um, whether it is now your inability to relate to the world, you know, if you are just so uh, stressed and traumatized by what, you, what, you, what you've witnessed, you know, how does your story end? Every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. So how does your character story end? And what is the story of your cell? I love talking to you about these things because I have like story idea after story idea after story idea. Just in what you just said in the last, you know, couple of minutes, I'm like, oh, you know, you're talking about, oh, you have a wife at home. How is she going to understand? I'm Maybe I'm just going dark, but in, in my mind, I'm like, oh, you have a wife at home and now you've been spotted hunting, you know, vampires. Now they know where you live and what's going to happen to her now. How do you protect that wife? Right. That's a story hook right there. You know, and so and, like and, even getting into systems there, like she is a touchstone. If you've played vampire, you're familiar with touchstones. And here is a person who very much means something to me as a hunter. And so the principle is similar there. Yeah. And then we've all seen those, you know, movies or TV shows where, you know, the the beat cop or whatever rolls up onto an FBI investigation and they're like, this is not your jurisdiction or whatever. And I can only imagine that that's what it's like in, in the, the hunting world where I'm an individual, you know, hunter and I roll up on a full investigation by any of the factions that are going on uh, second inquisition wise. And what is that conflict that's going to be there? Um, and I- Yeah, that's, that's, all, that's, like that's one of the things that, that comes up frequently in Hunter 2 is 
when we say they're antagonists, that doesn't mean necessarily that, oh, you see the, you know, the FBI, you see the SAD over there and immediately it becomes a gunfight. Not necessarily. The SAD may see a value in, oh, here's these, you know, these yokels with guns and they think, you know, they know vampires exist. Let's send them into the vampire's lair to flush them out and see what happens. You know, so what happens there? Like you already know that you probably shouldn't trust the SAD. Um, and it's not just governmental organizations too, right? Like mm -hmm. there's all kinds of orgs out there. Um, you know, we mentioned before the Society of St. Leopold. So here's this, you know, very strong religiously motivated um, org. Uh, there are definitely things like um, corporate orgs, things almost like uh, not as comical as Ghostbusters is, but, you know, here's professional groups that uh, have a specific application, something that they're trying to accomplish. If you're a longstanding fan of the World of Darkness, you know, if you've been playing for a long time, you'll recognize some of these. Um, and if you're a new player, you know, it's just a new piece you can use as well uh, because, you know, here they are as part of the setting. So, you know, this is great stuff for longstanding players and, you know, a, again, a very substantial world for new players as well. Well, since you mention it then, um, and not, we're not gonna do too many spoilers or anything, but, um, you know, Hunter the Reckoning has been around in previous editions. What, what is the difference um, that we're going to see with fifth edition Hunter? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. Uh, one of the big ones here is, you know, the previous editions of, of Hunter the Reckoning had this idea of the imbued, that you became a hunter. Um, and this is kind of for fifth edition, we've leaned into drive being the things that push that pushes you into being a hunter. In previous editions, it was more of a supernatural power. You know, there was there was something behind the scenes that was awakening you and kind of letting you, leading you into this supernatural world. Um, and that was one of the things that uh, many players uh, found difficulty sort of rationalizing, right? Like, well, I'm a hunter of the supernatural, but I'm supernatural myself. And so, you know, we're kind of moving, well, kind of, we're definitely moving away from that in the fifth edition. But if that's something you like, uh, the way Hunter is set up is uh, it's very flexible. So one of the edges, for example, you know, these, these benefits that Hunters have, let's say, you know, we're talking about Arsenal. And so, you know, I may have access to these amazing weapons because, you know, I used to be a member of the SAD. And so, you know, I smuggled these weapons out of the, you know, the, the facility. Or, you know, I may have Arsenal, you know, literally the same edge. But in my head, an angel puts a gun on the side of the bed every day and I wake up and it's there and I have to use that. And so that's a way for me to, you know, become questionable, you know, almost supernatural myself. It's a way to kind of introduce the imbued. If you like that element of the world of darkness and legacy editions, you can use it that way, uh, but you're not required to use it. You know, there are certain things that, well, why can the hunter do this? This is kind of flirting with the supernatural yeah, that's, that's risky stuff. And other hunters may look at you, you know, you've used this edge. Are you one of them? You know, so there's all of these, you know, these interesting conflicts within the hunter society itself. Um, so, you know, we're kind of taking, again, it's a phrase I like to use, the greatest hits. We're taking some of the greatest hits of Hunter and remixing them uh, for the fifth edition. I love that. I also love the fact that, that it's creating this conflict within, you know, hunting, you know, uh, parties, you know, the, you're playing around a table with other people and what brings you together and what is the conflicts that's within the group? Because in Vampire, we already know we have that. Um, and so um, it's nice to hear that we're going to have that player interaction or it's not like, oh, it's hunky dory, we're all going to go and, you know, hunt the supernatural. Um, there is something that would create some sort of, you know, mystery or secrets. And I think that's what draws me so much to the storytelling storyteller system in general is that not only um is the system awesome but like the, there's there's a reason to be at the table and have conversations uh with your fellow players and it's not just oh we're gonna you know bust down a dungeon door and grab some loot you know th this is a very different type of story that you're telling um in a, in a role-playing game and having those conflicts are cool. And I know that personally, you know, I draw, especially like my, my hunter role models from across popular culture. Um, there are a lot of them and they do have different origin stories. My favorite is one that does draw on, on supernatural, you know, um, I'm sure all of you guys can guess who she is. Um, especially if you follow me because I talked about it a lot, but, um, but then there are also so many other styles of supernatural hunters. And you mentioned Ghostbusters, which I never even really made the connection to, but yeah, of course they're hunters. 
Um, you know, and so I think people will be able to draw from influences that they've grown up with or, you know, read in, in different media books and comic books and, and seen in films and TV shows. And I think that for me, vampire draws so much from different pop culture vampire inspiration. And that's why I love it because it's almost like this combination of all of the things that I grew up with that I love about vampires in general. And Hunter can do the same thing just with the opposite, you know? Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, there's, there's I'm lots very of stuff to tweak to there one. too. I mean, you know, it, let's, let's say that, you know, we're playing a Chronicle and everything that we've, we've seen and unfolded so far has convinced the cell, right? That at the cell, everyone at the table, oh, we know this is a werewolf. We know this is a werewolf. And turns out this is a serial killer, right? This is not, this is not a supernatural monster. This is a very human threat. What do you do? Right? If you've committed to opposing the supernatural and now you have to, what are you gonna, are you gonna kill a person? What does that do to you? What does that, you know, what costs does that evoke? Is, is that the right answer? Um, and in many cases, that may end up being an antagonist. You know, I talked earlier about, you know, the, the hunter career is probably not a long one, but the hunter who goes too far is very much one of those destinations, right? You aren't always gonna get gunched at the hands of a vampire. Uh, you know, here's, here's a, a hunter who, has taken too many shortcuts, you know, who has taken, who, who has conceded too much moral ground and is now arguably as bad as the vampire, right? Um, and so where do you draw those lines? And that's going to be different for every troop. That's going to be, you know, different in every story. Uh, but, you know, the, the conflicts in Hunter aren't just, you know, monster of the week, supernatural bashes. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited about it. I know I say I'm super excited about everything, but I really am. I mean, there's so much great content coming. And, um, you know, with, with that note, on that note, I don't want to forget to tell everybody to make sure to go to the Renegade uh, website, renegadegamestudios.com. Uh, you can place pre-orders for all of this stuff um, and that's coming. We do have even more coming, but we're only allowed to tease so much. So the next time, Justin, that we get together, I know we're going to be announcing a lot of other great stuff. Um, but for now, I really hope that everybody's so excited about what 2022 is going to bring for World of Darkness. And I want to encourage everybody who wants to know more about um, the brands uh, that, are, that are right now, Vampire, Hunter, and World of Dar Darkness in general, you can go to the uh, World of Darkness website. Well, there's the World of Darkness Discord. Renegade Game Studios has a Discord. We also have a dedicated Facebook group for uh, role-playing games. Um, so please make sure to check out all of the links that I'm sure are going to be on the bottom of the screen somewhere here uh, to get all of the information and stay up to date with anything you have questions about. Uh, there are a lot of great people uh, that are always in these different forums chatting about games that are, that are going on, what you can do in your own stories. And it's a really great resource. All of them are really great resources to go ahead and check out. Um, I think that that is it. I just want to make sure that everybody stays tuned and checks out the calendar for the rest of everything that is going on at Renegade Con. Uh, we have so many more things to talk about. And uh, make sure to check out the storyteller panel uh, with Trivia and Diana. That, that's going to be really, really cool as well. Um, Justin, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I know I get a very, um, I don't know, o overly, um, I don't know, excited about all of this stuff. It's just so much fun. Uh, I love working on all of this with you guys. Yeah, I love it too. Thanks for thanks for having me, uh, especially to the audience too. Thanks for listening to us talk about this. Um, very much looking forward to having this stuff in y'all's hands and letting y'all play. Uh, tell your own stories because uh, that's really what's important to me, right? That's that's I love games because they let groups of people get together and tell their stories. So uh, it's, it's fantastic doing stuff like this. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us and everybody out there watching. Uh, thank you for listening in and hearing us ramble on about the things that we love and the things that we're going to share with you. And we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.